White Shin Dude executes three lashings expertly while soldiers burn. Got it? Hi internet, I'm Steve, and this is Rayfo. A recurring topic in my last few videos has been the concept of bonding in the Cosmere, and today we finally get to talk about the instance that basically everybody knows and loves, the Knights Radiant of Roshar. Quick recap, Cosmere bonding occurs when the spirit webs of two individuals are bridged, typically a human and some sort of splinter of investiture. This allows spiritual resources and abilities to be shared between the two entities. On Roshar, specifically with the Knight's Radiant, this is called a Nahel bond, and means that the bonded Spren now has a solid tie to the physical realm, as well as the bonded Knight developing control over the natural surges that those Spren personify. Ten overlapping surges. 10 orders of Knights Radiant, only seven of which we've officially met. It can be pretty difficult trying to keep them all straight. Luckily, you've got me. After hours of research and pondering, I've created this acrostic to help you remember the difference between Will Shapers and Windrunners. If you've read the prologue to The Way of Kings, this should feel pretty familiar to you. White Shin Dude executes three lashings expertly while soldiers burn. Got it? White Shin Dude executes three lashings expertly while soldiers burn. Okay, so it all starts with our favorite and the most well-known order, the Windrunners. Windrunners have control over the surges of adhesion and gravitation, so they are able to manipulate atmospheric pressure around objects and alter their spiritual gravitation connection to their planet, changing their specific gravity. But not like specific gravity, just like their specific gravity. But basically, they can stick stuff together and make things fall the wrong way. Apart from the first ideal, which all Knights Radiants share, life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination, the ideals we've seen of the Windrunners are all related to protecting. I will protect those who cannot protect themselves. I will protect even those I hate. I will cry when I can't figure out who to protect. The Windrunners are presided over by the Herald of Kings, Yezrian, who has some gorgeous art in the end papers of Oathbringer. I mean, have you seen him? Huh! Now, we know that each surge overlaps with two radiant orders, and in this case, gravitation is shared with the next order, White Shin, Skybreakers. The Skybreakers' oaths are centered around the concept of justice, and they take it upon themselves to absolutely nail any lawbreakers. So far, gravitation is the only surge we've really seen used by the Skybreakers, allowing them to fly in the same manner as Windrunners. That wasn't flying, that was falling with style. They also have access to the surge of division, which means they should be able to influence the decay or dissolution of substances. However, we've yet to really see that surge from a Skybreaker. Division is also used by the, which in dude, Dustbringers. It seems that control over this surge allows the breaking of chemical bonds between atoms, which causes a large release of energy, often in the form of a flame. Perhaps that's why they preferred the name Releasers. The amount of control that Dustbringers have over this surge is really impressive, from delicate engravings to straight-up combustion of stone. We don't know much about their patron herald, Chanaraj, except that Fleet once beat her in a race, implying she's real fast. This is probably because of the other surge Dustbringers combined, that of Abrasion. However, the most we've seen of Abrasion is actually from the next order, the my chin dude executes. Edge Dancers. Abrasion is the surge of friction. Edge Dancers are able to change how much grip their body has to any surface, enabling them to run up the steepest inclines or slide effortlessly on the ground like butter on a warm pancake. The oaths of the Edge Dancers seem to focus on compassion and empathy, remembering the forgotten and listening to the ignored. Though, I'm not sure I would want to necessarily go to lift for therapy. The other surge of the Edge Dancers is progression, which is basically exactly what it sounds like, making things grow faster than they normally would. This works on plants as well as people. Manifesting is the ability to heal others, basically extending the benefits of stormlight healing to other people. Knowing this, it makes sense that the herald over the edge dancers, Videl, was responsible for training surgeons before desolations. The other order known for their healing abilities are the... Which dude executes three... The Truth Watchers. We don't really know much about them, despite the fact that we've met at least briefly three in the books so far. Historically, this order has been fairly closed off and secretive, not because of an exceeding abundance of disdain, but rather an exceeding abundance of tact. According to one Truth Watcher, their uniqueness stems from the fact that they can see, likely a combination of their surges, progression, and illumination. We've seen what this may look like in Oathbringer, but that account may not be the most reliable because... reasons? We've yet to hear any of their oaths, but the Truth Watchers were known to seek knowledge for the benefit of other people. 
Perhaps this is why their herald, Pylea, has been seen in the Polanium in Carbranth. White Shin Dude executes three lashings. Light weavers do exactly what their name says. They can weave light. More technically, they, as with Truth Watchers, have control over light, sound, and other waveforms. They can make illusions. The applications of this power are pretty varied, from espionage to providing spiritual sustenance for the other orders. Pretty sure they were the cute cat video database of the Knights Radiant. The other surge of the Light Weavers is that of transformation, turning one substance into a different substance. In world, this is called soul casting. This enables Light Weavers, as well as the next order, Else Callers, to change stones into grain, rock into smoke, and blood into different blood. The only things that are impossible to soul cast are aluminum, for cosmere wide reasons, and apparently sticks. Unlike the other orders, light weavers only have one standard ideal life before death, etc. The later ideals require the speaking of individual truths, seemingly geared toward personal growth and self discovery, though this also may feed into some self destructive tendencies as well. In fact, the patron of the light weavers, Shalash, has taken both self discovery and self destruction quite literally. Next up are the White Chin Dude executes three lashings expert uh, else callers, of whom we've met but one. This order can soul cast as well as appropriately else call, or transfer at will in and out of the cognitive realm using the surge of transportation. Given the danger of travel in Shadesmar, it makes sense that this order is known for being wise and careful. Though, if the rumors are true about what their patron Harold Batar is doing, perhaps they are too careful. Sharing the surge of transportation is the Will Shapers, though they're not masters of Shadesmar like the Else Callers are. They can also bind the surge cohesion, but since we haven't really met any Will Shapers yet, we don't know what that means exactly. The pe the pug 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 the pug 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 the prelude to the Stormlight Archive is in the viewpoint of Kalak, the patron herald of their order. But we still don't know much about them, except that Kalak had either really good or really bad breath. Okay, uh, White Shin Dude executes three lashings expertly while soldiers. Then there's the Stony Stoic Stone Wards, who we've also never met, kinda. There's a crazy guy running around after the Way of Kings that may or may not be Talonel, the Stone Ward Herald. In a flashback, a uh, flash way back, we also witness a stone ward binding a surge to form steps out of the side of a cliff face. This gets referred to as the surge of tension. It's not. Sorry guys, the Stormfather is wrong on this one. It's cohesion, or the surge of strong axial interconnection, which seems to be able to affect the material phase of substances, or at least stone, making it go all goopy instead of be solid. If surge binding allows manipulation on other realms, cognitive or spiritual as well as physical, then perhaps that's how the Will Shapers got their name, by making people's wills go all goopy. Anyway, stone wards can also bind tension, the soft axial interconnection surge, which is shared with the uh, white shin dude executes three lashings expertly while soldiers burn bondsmiths. Now, the bondsmiths are an interesting trio, mostly because of what that sentence says. Historically, there's been a max number of three. So far, we've met one. So considering the potential number of knights in other orders, these guys are already 33% done with the awkward getting to know you games. Just like the other heralds, the former leader of the Bondsmiths is still kicking around on Roshar. Ishar, the Herald of Luck, was apparently the wisest of the heralds, and at least according to some, the only one who didn't go cuckoo for creme puffs over the past four and a half thousand years. After learning what he's up to, however, I'm not too sure about that. Bondsmiths bind the surges of tension and adhesion, and as implied by the name, are focused on bonding and connecting things uniting, if you will. Adhesion also gives the use of the full lashing, as we've seen with the Windrunners, which is being able to stick things to other things. Tension is a bit more fiddly, because it works differently for bondsmiths than it does for stone wards, but in relating to the binding of things, we may be able to think of the surge of tension similar to how we think of a rope that has tension, a force that is literally connecting two objects. Pull on one, it pulls on the other. It's also been described as the ability to take something flexible and make it rigid, or to make a piece of cloth become as hard as steel. What with fabrial technology progressing as it is, sounds like something we might have seen already in Yaakoved. We know that tension can be used by bondsmiths to repair inanimate objects, pulling things back together like beads on a spiritual string. We've also seen adhesion used on a spiritual level, sticking two spirit webs together, artificially creating a connection. Apparently, when you combine these two surges of tension and adhesion, some pretty crazy cool stuff can happen. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Also, big thanks to the indomitable Joff Wu, both in general for his support of the Sander fan community, and letting me use this nifty chart! If you like the art you saw in this video, be sure to support the artists that I've listed in the description below. They have some fantastic stuff. Check them out. Next time, we'll be continuing our exploration of investiture on Roshar, so check out these other videos to make sure you're up to speed. I'll try and get it released quicker than the last one, so be sure to subscribe so you're notified as soon as it comes out. In the meantime, the next Legion book was just released, so I have to read and find out. <laughs>